In the closed session, we discussed possible settlement negotiations and or strategy related to litigation expenditures. Do I hear a motion to adjourn the attorney-client session? Motion by Vice Chairman Shaw, seconded by Mrs. Brill. Any discussion? All in favor? All opposed? The attorney-client session is now adjourned. The board will now call the public portion of our data order. Let the record show that all seven board members are still present. Also present are Superintendent Dr. Donald Fenoy, General Counsel Sean Bernard, Inspector General Teresa Michael, and Board Clerk Carol Bass. Senior staff members will join us periodically as directed by the superintendent. This meeting is being transcribed by a closed captioner, so remember to speak at a reasonable pace. Will everyone please stand for the pledge to be led by Vice Chairman Shaw? Board members, we have uh, four sets of minutes that need to be approved. We have a motion. Motion by Mrs. McQuinn, seconded by Vice Chairman Shaw. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. We have no items been added for good cause. Mr. Superintendent, are you withdrawing any items? Mr. Chairman, I'm not withdrawing anything at this time. All right, board members, we have one item that's been pulled. That's COS-1. Is there anybody else who wants to pull anything? Seeing none, we'll take a motion to approve the agenda. Motion by Mrs. Andrews, seconded by Mrs. Whitfield. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Mr. Superintendent, you have comments? I'm sorry, first disclosures and abstentions, anyone? Okay, Mr. Superintendent, comments? Yes, sir, good afternoon. I'd like to begin by praising our district's teachers. Monday was World Teachers Day. This global recognition is held annually on October the 5th. This year, recognizing the dedication of our teachers holds extraordinary significance. In March, our educators pivoted remarkably well to distance learning with little more than one week notice. Since then, amid this ongoing pandemic, they have continued to navigate situations that they never signed up for when they chose the teaching profession. They have fine-tuned the art of distance learning. They are teaching students in class and remotely simultaneously. They are adhering to COVID-19 safety guidelines in their classrooms and doing all of this while taking care of their own families. In short, our educators are working harder and smarter than ever as they teach and engage two physically separated groups of children. Teachers, while October 5th is the official day for your world recognition, please know that this school board and I value you and your tremendous contributions every day of the year. One of the challenges our teachers have faced is the fluidity by which students are alternating back and forth between distance learning and in-person instruction. As I mentioned before, the district must maintain enrollment stability. By now, parents and guardians have been notified that the district is requesting that they lock in a choice, distance or in-person instruction for the remainder of this semester, which ends on January the 29th. Parents are asked to indicate the decision in, in their student's portal by October the 14th. We're seeing the following question quite often. What if a parent makes a choice and then changes their mind? It's important to understand that, that there is a waiver process by which parents can request a change to their mode of instruction. We understand that there are many factors for parents to consider before making this decision. Please review the FAQs emailed home to parents and guardians yesterday. You will also find additional information on the Make Your Choice page on the district website. I also recognize that parents have many questions about how su suspected COVID-19 cases are identified and handled on our school campuses. The district works closely with the Florida Department of Health regarding the confirmation of positive cases and safety protocol on buses, campuses, and ancillary buildings. Our, our other very important health partner is the healthcare district of Palm Beach County, which staffs nurses in our schools. I have invited Dr. Belma Andrick, Chief Medical Officer for the Healthcare District of Palm Beach County, to join us today to share an update regarding nurse staffing in our district operated schools. Why it is critically important for students and staff to stay home if they are experiencing any symptoms of COVID-19, the role of the healthcare district plays when the school district has a suspected or positive case, and finally, an update on rapid antigen testing in our schools. I would like to preface the testing update by reminding the board that antigen testing in our schools among students who exhibit symptoms is forthcoming. Details about the implementation, such as the cons consent process, are still being determined. 
Today, Dr. Andrick will speak specifically to how the test is performed and the accuracy of it. Dr. Andrick, we thank you for joining us, and we turn the podium over to you at this time. Good afternoon. You hear me? Good afternoon. Okay, mm -hmm. speak up. Doc, can you pull that microphone up farther? There you go. Okay, Great. thank better. you. Thank you. Thank you for having me again. It looks like three long weeks since I was being I've been here. Um, I'm Bell Manuk, I'm Chief Medical Officer for Healthcare District, and as Superintendent said, I'm going to give you an update on school nursing program in our schools. So just, okay. Um, many of you know that we are one of lucky school districts and counties that have school nurses um, in our schools um, since 80s, I learned recently. Uh, that's not a case with more than 60 to 80 percent of school districts around the country. And I learned also that early on in this program, uh, many of the school nurses were actually financed by local hospitals. And I learned that school nursing program was really community effort every, ever since inception. Since that time, sometime in the early 2000s, actually, school healthcare district become um, a larger provider of the school nurses, and at present time, this looks like that. 165 schools that we have school nurses in uh, are actually staffed with healthcare district nurses. 36 of those positions are sponsored by school district, um, and three schools are still run and operated by the Department of Health, and two schools schools are actually um, staffed at agency nurses that you hire. Uh, so at present time, out of 165 schools, we have 34 vacancies. Actually, 15 are already hired and onboarding in process of training, and 10 we're still looking for uh, to employ. So this is kind of usual turnover at the beginning of the school year, like I said last time. But of course, this year we are all very um, uh, in need of nurses in the school because we did um, conceptualize all our response to the crisis in the school in the school around the nurses. Uh, and how we do that, um, as Superintendent mentioned, um, the main goal of the healthcare provider, our nurses in the school, is to really quickly identify child that is present on campus um, that come with sick in, to the school or develop symptoms while in the school. So what we learned first three weeks, we are really quick to identify those kids. Either teacher or school administration notice that the child has some symptoms, send them to the health room, and that's where the nurse screens students for COVID-19 symptoms and makes the determination if it is safe to return to the class or it requires actually parents pick up and going for the testing. Um, principal uh, participates in sense that those children that are sent home uh, for testing and suspected cases, once it's confirmed by DOH that the case is positive, they initiate kind of uh, collecting information of students' whereabouts while on the campus so that the Department of Health can uh, paint whole picture of the uh, contacts that that student possibly had while on the campus. As I said, Department of Health finish that contact tracing and contact all parents of the children that potentially came in a close contact and are identified as a close contact to that index case. So this is a questionnaire that our nurses are using. Um, it looks simple, but what we learned very fast, it's not that simple. Uh, we really try not to send children home that have symptoms that kids always have. So for that reason, Healthcare District established incident command that is fully staffed with two physicians, all working hours during the operating hour, uh, school hours, as well as few nursing supervisors who are available for nurses for any telemedicine services, if you wish, to kind of make that decision really more easy on the nurses. Um, you can see that, and, and I share this slide because we collect all information electronically. That's why we are able now to produce more and more data. And I will share some uh, dashboards that we pull out of those reports. Nurse decides, again, if the student is safe to return to the class or the testing is recommended, and we recommend the student goes to their providers and get tested. If the student does not have um, uh, their own provider, in that case, we kind of provide them community resources. Those are uh, resources that are free of charge of testing. One location is antigen, rapid antigen testing. 
uh, or others are like PCR testing on scheduling basis or walk-up basis. What we sent home with the student are instructions that say that your child today was screened positive for the COVID screening. This does not mean that your child has a COVID, but testing is highly recommended. Out of all those screenings, this is some of our outcomes. We screened for the first few weeks of school up to the yesterday. This slide is with, with um, yesterday data. Over 2,400 kids. You can see the roughly 52% uh, recommended testing, and you can see grade distribution um, as well. Um, not surprisingly, um, highest number of symptoms is among youngest kids. The younger the grades, the more screenings we done. We know that kids have more respiratory symptoms the younger they are. So, and those are like summary of all symptoms. All, all those clicks that I showed you previously, those are the clicks of the nurses. What kind of symptoms and what um, kind of uh, assessment produced, uh, their assessment produced recommendation that they have need to be tested. On the bottom, you can see also trends since we started doing this. Uh, the more kids went to school, the more tests, we, the more screenings we performed, the more testing recommendations we recommend. We also send more kids back to the class. But you can see the more kids went into school, you can see this past Monday had really a jump because we know that more kids came back this Monday to the school. The bottom right corner is actually outcomes of the tests that we recommended for testing or we learned from the parents Maybe they never send a child to the school. You can see we have remote learners as well on this slide. But any time that we learn um, about test outcome, we document and we report to the Department of Health. We also document contact exposures. If the children in the screening form said they were exposed to somebody who had a COVID, we also report them to the Department of Health at the end of the day. For positive cases, however, we called in real time to the Department of Health to alert them that we identify positive case on the campus. Um, so I think this slide um, is too, ma too many, I mean, there is a lot of information on this slide, but you can see that many parents still send children with the symptoms to the school. I think, you know, the more we do, the more responsible we will be because we are returning them home <laughs> if they have a symptom. So it's very crucial, of crucial importance that parents keep children with the symptoms at home. It might be a COVID, most likely is not, but just to be sure at present time, rather sure than sorry, we do test them for, send them for testing if the screening is um, to the extent that it requires testing. Um, I also would like to talk a little bit about those positives. Um, we, we, you know, like this positive case is not surprising, right? We knew that we we're going to have positive cases. Uh, this, the school is just representation of our community. It's it's about what we do with that, right? All activities that we have currently in in, in a school uh, nursing program is to really uh, identify early on kids with the symptoms because we are trying really hard to prevent any opportunity for transmission. Those kids, if they have symptoms, they are highly to transmit, right? So quick isolation and sending them home is of crucial importance. So we know that we're going to have sick kids. But as, as of yesterday, we did not have any secondary transmissions. So Department of Health doing all those contact tracing, they, we did not have so far in our public schools any transmission from student to students, although we had positive students in the campus. Uh, superintendent asked me to talk a little bit about tests. Um, we recently received notification. We heard uh, governor uh, two weeks ago that he announced the state of Florida did receive adequate supplies of the Abbott tests, uh, like many other states. Uh, and we are very excited about this, and I'm going to talk a little bit about why. This antigen test is a rapid card antigen. It's different what we knew so far about rapid antigen tests because usually. What we, when we talk until now, rapid antigen test was like we go in MD now or, and some urgent cares carry them, nursing homes have them. It's called like rapid antigen requires machinery. This is test that requires only card. And I have one here. And you can see on the picture, um, actually the test, performing of the test is just a few swirls in one nostril and another nostril. It does not have to go very deep like in the beginning of pandemic. It's anterior nostrils, few swirls 
in, in, in both nostrils and few drops of the fluid in one little box, the top uh, circle that you see, we put few drops of that fluid and this goes in, we close it and we leave it for 15 minutes to develop result. If it's positive, usually it comes in a few minutes. If it's negative, take 15 minutes. So development of the test is 15 minutes. What will this mean for, for the schools? You saw that roughly 50-50% of the kids we send to the classroom or we send to home. If we see how many positives per day we have so far, let's say three to four. Um, if we test more, maybe we'll have them more the same day identify. But let's say we have eight to 10 identify for large school, we still will not send more than 200 kids home because we have a rapid antigen test. Um, so, um, I, and I know that there is a lot of questions between, between difference between PCR and antigen. I'm trying to anticipate some of the questions. I receive them a lot of these days. So, um, there is no perfect test still on the market, right? Both PCR and antigen test has a pros and cons. This test is pretty solid sensitivity and specificity if it's used appropriately. And when I say it's used appropriately, that means for symptomatic people. And the reason for that being is like this test is really good for first seven days of infection. And that's the time when we shred a lot of virus, right? Makes sense. That's why it's kind of easy to pick up. PCR test is good test for much longer period of time. But PCR will pick up much longer um, the infection. But you, re you really care only about the first few days, actually five to six days where we transmit illness. Remember, we were talking about our main role is to prevent transmission in the schools. That's why this test is really solidly good for what we need. This test is good because give us rapid answer during the early infection. And those are the kids that present in the health room with the symptoms. So um, this test is FDA approved like any other test and has good um, reviews by all medical community to use. So we should not have reservation if you use it pro appropriately. That pretty much concludes my um, presentation. I just want to finish saying that my agency, many of you might know, was very instrumental in uh, um, COVID response in our community from early March. We are one of the largest uh, testing providers. Uh, so far, we tested almost 100,000 people. My boss says it's a lot of noses. Um, but we learned a thing or two about testing. Um, we are confident that um, uh, we will be training actually on Monday on our nurses on this, how to collect and perform this test. We didn't get a test. I know Jay Bogus um, is supposed to receive the mail. I'm asking every day, did you get a mail? Did you get a mail? Uh, not yet. We are expecting that state will send it to your door. You will be directly recipient of that. And I'm learning that's going to be for all schools, charter, private, uh, public schools. Um, and, you know, uh, nurse, school nurses join our other departments in that um, response for COVID. Um, like many of uh, healthcare providers, we feel that uh, everything that we did so far prepares us just for this year, all our experiences. And I know school nurses did a really awesome job for a couple of weeks, and they feel very confident that they know what they're doing and that all that they did before in the schools and their careers really prepared them for this year. And they are our heroes, and I thank them deeply. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Andrew. Mr. Chairman, I turn it over to you. Mrs. Whitfield. Thank you so much. Dr. Andrew, thank you for coming. Um, I had uh, two questions. Um, one, how often would you get a um, negative result that wasn't true on a um, on a rapid test. And uh, the second question is, um, we have recently just added in a new piece about siblings. So if a sibling goes home with um, signs of COVID or something like that, um, we are sending you know everyone in that family home. Um, I'm curious if you had a family member who one tested positive on the rapid test, but the other tested negative, would you send both home or would we keep uh, the child who tested negative and sent home the positive. So this test is only for symptomatic children, so we would not be able to test siblings who are not symptomatic. So we will test only symptomatic children. Sensitivity and specificity is high. I don't know how much. It's over 80%, but they never published really, to my knowledge, exact numbers. 
So I go just by the FDA recommendation and other epidemiology resources that I'm following. A um, couple national leaders such as Harvard School of Public Health and Yale School of Public Health that they highly recommend this test. Mrs. Andrews. Thank you so much for all that you're doing for us, uh, the health uh, department as well as the healthcare district. And for all of our nurses, we know here in Palm Beach County, we're lucky to have school nurses as we look at the districts from across the state. And this may be a district question, but I did uh, want to thank uh, Jay Boggess, Dr. Jay Boggess, for calling me because I was really worried about getting the data and not having a nurse in every school uh, that I spoke about at the last board meeting. So I'm happy you're here today to give us some updates. But one thing I was alarmed about was, were the alternative schools. And I noticed how we had them classified at, with a nurse supervisor and, and there was not a nurse on, 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 on the grounds, on the school grounds for those schools. And so did we get that corrected uh, for those alternative schools? Because so we came up with some temporary plan. We're going to look into that and more permanent solution. Um, we, we, we did come up with a temporary solution of our nurses and supervisors going there um, on regular basis, more than usually we do for alternative schools. And we also um, um, improve communication of our telemedicine services availability to them because when they have a kid with a runny nose and cough, they, we all think it's a COVID, right? Picking phone and kind of going a little bit more in discussion with a pediatrician, very really uh, off, often and, and most, most commonly uh, relax them in the sense of, yes, this is safe to go back to the class or send this child home. So we provide them more resources when we are not there, but we also increase a little bit presence while we find more permanent solution. It's for discussion. We never had because of the small size of the student population, we never had nurses on those campuses. Any other questions? Dr. Robinson. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Andrew. Um, a couple of questions. Um, will you be able and willing to screen and test staff with the rapid antigen test? So um, we are working with um, your leaders in formalizing legally this relationship. We are very willing to do that for teachers as well from day one to screen them and offer testing because, again, the main uh, role of this program is to prevent transmissibility of the virus. We cannot separate teachers and students, so it makes total sense for us, and we are willing to do that. Uh, it's just the legality of employee health um, that we can do that. And I think I understand it's in the final phases of, a fi uh, of that contract, MOU, adding to our MOU, and uh, we can start it any day now. Okay, and would you, uh, will you also be able to do the rapid flu test? So we did not talk about it. We don't have machines in the clinics. The rapid flu requires machines. We have them in the clinics. Uh, we're getting them in the clinics, our clinics. But does not uh, test like this does not uh, exist. It's not in our hands now. Okay, so you're getting the machines. No, not in the schools, in our clinics. Oh. This is the first point okay. of care test that we will have in our schools. Nurses never tested besides hearing and vision screening. We do not have any medical testing. It's the first time that we are actually getting CLIA waiver for those clinics. Okay. Okay, so I understand that. So um, can we look at how we might be able to find some creative way of getting the machines in our schools so that we can screen for flu because, um, I mean, I truly appreciate the work that you're doing, uh, but we know where we are, what season we're going into, and mm -hmm. we could say no. I mean, I'd be thankful if the child or staff tests negative for COVID, but then the question is, well, do they have another disease that's very Correct. Much and we were just too? talking, we start, start talking about that. Now when we have a test, we start, now we send everybody home who is sick enough, right? But now when we have negative COVID, we still think the child that looks like really sick should go to their pediatrician for further care because they have a fever and cough for other reasons, right? But this is important for like, you know, COVID panic and um, COVID transmissibility in the schools that um, we should address. So, we, we so I understand and appreciate that. So I, I would just ask that we look at some creativity because um, many of our students, and this may have been the point Mrs. Andrews was making, um, many of our students don't have private providers or even transportation to get 
to be tested. And so it, it would just, I would just want to put that on our wish list for further development of our partnership. I would like to have full-blown clinic in any school. I'm All in. Right. You just have to find a way. Okay. And then I heard a sentence that said something about sending 200 kids home, but I, I missed the full context of that. Would you refresh me? So on this um, slide, you can see the orange slide is the orange part of the performed screenings, all kids that we're sending home, right? And on the bottom, you can see numbers per day, how many orange bar graph on the bottom talks about how many kids we send home versus, okay. I'm sorry, how many we send for testing home, and blue are how many were saved to return to class. So I don't see from here, like 190 plus on, on October 5th, what does it say on the orange bar? 193. Right now, 193 kids were identifying a whole district that they need to go home for testing. Okay, fantastic. And we have access to this presentation? I, yes, I, I, I share with everybody. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Andrew. You're welcome. Mrs. Andrews. And just to add on to that, our school bus drivers, our custodians, our food service, all, the non-instructional team, I know we're at a starting point, but we wanna make sure the teachers, the students, but the whole family of folks uh, that are essential to the operation of the school district. Mrs. Whitfield. Thank you, just one other point. On, on the slide, I noticed that it was only uh, for five years old and above. And so for our children that are younger than five, we have some VPK, we just would not give them this test, right? Actually, that's a very good question. I'm not sure if this is five and above. I did not still get specs on that. I think this is for all ages, but I, I'm not sure. Oh, I thought for the rapid test, I thought that's what that was. Uh, They're different? Uh, this is different. Ballpark has antigen testing, and they do uh, for five and above, but I think it's preference of that lab. In the ballpark, we test everybody, um, all ages. So I'm not aware that this test has any age limitation. I think it's individual labs determination from whom they want to collect. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? <clears throat> thank you, <clears throat> thank you, doctor, for taking the time to be with us today. We appreciate it. No Mr. Superintendent, do you have anything else? No, so that ends my <clears throat> that ends my comments. Thank you. Board comments, Mrs. McQuinn. I'm not being flippant with this. I just want to say to our teachers out there who probably are still in school working. This is to the teachers who have contacted us um, regarding the fact that we are sitting here with our partitions and they don't have theirs yet. I actually considered asking that mine be removed, but I knew that would create more of a hassle than not. But I just want you to know that I think all of my colleagues agree that um, we hope that you have your partitions as soon as possible. Thank you. Mrs. Whitfield. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna save my comments on um, Mr. Latson for when we get to that section, but um, I wanted to just say briefly that I had an opportunity to visit two schools this week. Um, it was wonderful to see everyone um, and it was, um, very evident how stressed out our teachers are. And I just wanna say a huge thank you to all of them for the work that they're doing. Um, my eldest daughter and I do a gratitude journal and she wrote in her gratitude journal last night, I'm so grateful that I can go to school um, because it's just really a gift that we never realized was a gift. And so we are um, you know, grateful every day for the people who make it possible for um, school to go on and for the children to be able to, to be there and learn, um, especially the ones who are doing both virtual and um, in person. So I just wanted to say a quick thank you to that. Ms. Brill. Thank you, and I'm gonna save my comments for later, but because um, the item and also Mr. Barbieri has put up discussion items on what I wanted to talk about. Thank you. Mrs. Andrews. Thank you, and I want to say to the teachers as well as to members of the non-instructional uh, teams around the school district, I hear you. I see your emails, I'm reading them, and I'm trying to respond to you as much as possible. I'm referring a lot of your emails to the board office. And I know the simultaneous teaching is not working for many of you. It's not a one size fits all. 
I know many of our children are not getting it uh, through that process with remote, uh, uh, as well as uh, brick and mortar and all of this going on with one teacher. So we recognize teachers are very stressful and many of them are still waiting on a remote assignment. And I know that we're really waiting now on the parents to make a decision, but it's how we treat our teachers our bus drivers, our custodians. That's why when the uh, conversation came up about testing, we want everybody tested because we want everybody that's able to come to work to come to work. And we recognize some people have more resources than others, but everybody is equal. And I want you to know, Ms. McQuinn, they can take this panel away from me too. I mean, I walked in one day and I saw it. I want the teachers, I want the bus drivers, I want the custodians, the, the school food service, I want everybody to be safe. We don't want anyone to get hurt. Safety is number one. So we hear you when you're sending us these emails, these texts, all through the night, all through the day, crying for help. And I'm asking the superintendent and the administration to respond. Today in the Palm Beach Post, the article, and as I said to the superintendent and Mr. Tierney, I wake up every day with articles in the Palm Beach Post about us. And that should not be. I've been here for many years. We need to try to solve our problems before they get to the point to having to be printed in our newspapers. Try to help our teachers. One size does not fit all. I know maybe some of the structures may have to come down, but we didn't provide anything for some of these teachers who truly wanted to come back to brick and mortar, and they did, and now they're worried. So let's take care of each other. We're all in this together. Thank you. Dr. Robinson. Thank you. Um, so I have to keep on my mask, even if it's muffled, because my husband texts me and told me I took off my mask. So um, I, yeah, I want to keep my partition, OK? Because my husband will text me about that, too. But I want everybody else to be safe as well. So I just want to be clear about that. And I seem to go to sleep every night reading about problems in districts across the nation, which doesn't make ours any better, right? Um, it's really not a sh re really reassuring to me to know that we're not um, alone in this, um, in this terrible position. Uh, and so I'm just gonna say people need to vote, uh, but we also need to make sure we're creating multi sensory presentations for staff on this virus, as well as for the students. I am called every day by <clears throat> an educator who is concerned because of what they heard on their campus. Somebody tested positive, somebody's out sick, we think they're positive, this person came back, we're not sure their status. I know there's a discussion item that's gonna talk about a change in the protocols, but I am still stuck on the fact that we need to make sure that people understand how, as much as medical science understands, how this virus is transmitted, right? Um, and again, if we can create those, the multi-sensory presentations for students, I think they'll be more compliant with their masks, their hand washing, their social distancing, and so forth. So we do have to do better. Um, and, and I'm prayerful that we will. Thank you. Mr. Shaw, no comment. Um, I want to agree with uh, Mrs. Whitfield and Mrs. Andrews. I, I too understand uh, the frustration of our teachers. Um, we, we are getting the emails. Um, I'm frustrated quite a bit about some of the situations that have occurred with, with the administration. Um, I, I feel bad for our principals, you know, I, you know, I, uh, the fact that this board made it very clear that the principals were not to be put in a position to have to make decisions on who gets distance learning and who didn't. And then, you know, we're given this excuse that the instructional superintendents didn't want to do that. They did, you know, I don't know who's in charge uh, of the instructional superintendents that they can change something that the board was told was going to happen. But I'm disgusted that our principals are still facing this situation. Uh, I mean, I don't even understand why the HR division even had the approval process. I mean, anybody that didn't need any documentation should have just applied. I mean, what's the difference? I mean, everybody else got, um, they got the, uh, you know, the, the email back saying that they were qualified. So we left it up to the principals, which is exactly what this board didn't want to happen. 
now we're going to be sit with a situation where these kids are going to have to choose in school or out, you know, and I don't want that to be on the principals either. We need to figure out a way to make this work so we take the principals out of the middle of this. The teachers can be helped because the biggest concern I have is we have classrooms that are full of substitutes. We don't have qualified teachers because we have qualified teachers sitting at home because they're afraid to come back. If this policy would have been brought to us months ago, months ago from HR, all of this would have been settled because teachers would have been the, 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 the health, the health, the teachers with the health concerns would have been able to be matched up with students that were at home and we would have been able to get all this done. Now we're in one constant emergency situation after another. And I agree, every day in the, in the paper, it's one problem after another because this wasn't thought out in advance. So um, I want the teachers and the principals to know we hear you. We're gonna do what we can to get this mess straightened out. Um, it wasn't handled well by this administration and, and that's why we're in a position we're in today, but certainly moving forward, uh, I know that I'm gonna do everything I can to try and get this mess cleared up so that we can finally pick up the Palm Beach Post and not read about the Palm Beach County School District or the school board um, in, that, in those articles. We have agenda item speakers. We have a total of one hour and 36 minutes of recordings. We don't have anybody here in the, in the, in the room to, to speak to us um, on the agenda. So I'll ask the IT department to start running those, uh, running those at this time. Is it going to work back there or not? I'm trying to troubleshoot the audio. The IT department was not logged into the Google Meet, so we're trying to get them logged in and the audio coming through. Okay. As a resident of Florida and a resident of New York and a teacher in, and a supervisor in the New York City school system for 35 years, it is ridiculous that you would even consider reappointing someone who has skewed history in such a disgusting and disgraceful way. I pay Florida taxes for schools even though I don't use them. And I will not stop at this. I will take this to the governor's office. I will take this to the court. 
I will take this to wherever I have to take it. It's unfair, it's un-American that you're teaching history without including one of the most important port parts of history. I cannot believe that in the state of Florida, this is the only person you can find to do this job. I cannot believe that. I have the credentials and if necessary, I'll come down to Florida as a supervisor and administrator and perhaps handle the issue myself. My name is Lori Klein, K-L-E-I-N. I'm a supervisor, administrator, assistant principal, director of pupil personnel for the New York City school system. This is totally unacceptable, totally unacceptable on all counts. And I think this needs a lot of thought and I think this needs to be reevaluated. Lori Klein, K-L-E-I-N. And I'm a resident of Delray Beach, Florida. Thank you. Yes, my name is Randy Friedman and I'm calling about the high school principal Holocaust. I am sure you know this as it doesn't really surprise me that Palm Beach County would reinstate someone like this, as you have a Dr. McKee sitting in transportation, collecting $120,000 for doing you know what. No surprise, no surprise that you're disrespecting every Jewish person in Boca Raton and in the state of Florida and in the world. This is from a Holocaust survivor's daughter. You know why the Polish people didn't burn down the concentration camps? They used it for memories. This man should never, ever be able to teach a student, be around children, ever again. Thank you. Hi, Carol. This is Matt Perrell, and I wanted to voice my uh, concern on the anti-Semitic, Holocaust-denying principle that you guys are looking to reinstate at Spanish River High School. One, um, it's disgusting that he's a Holocaust denier as is, but the fact that he's educating a population of made up of Jewish students is even more disgusting, and I really hope that you guys consider um, the effect that you guys are going to have on the community and the rest of these students that you are literally putting um, a Holocaust denier back in um, his place. So I, I ask you to please consider um, removing him and not letting him back in and doing the right thing. Thank you and have a great day. Good morning. My name is Meredith White. I am located in New York. I'm calling to voice my opinion on the school board possibly reinstating this principal who has engaged in revisionist history and even hinted at Holocaust denial. Um, you should know that the national Jewish community is aware that this is taking place and is watching you closely and it would be prudent for you to make the proper decision here. This is a teaching moment and a learning lesson for school children, for adults, for educators, as well as administrators. I truly hope that you do not reward this despicable behavior and this despicable attitude. What other incidents and happenings in history will we be revising if we allow this principal to return to his post or to be compensated in any kind of way. Shame on anyone who thinks that reinstating him is acceptable. Thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Stephanie Garber and I'm calling regarding agenda item COS1. This is a letter that I wrote to the Palm Beach uh, News, uh, Palm Beach Post newspaper, and I'm going to read it to you because it reflects my feelings. I read the piece about the possibility of rehiring former 
Spanish River High School principal, William Latz, who was let go from the employee of Palm Beach County Public Schools due to the uproar of his denial of the Holocaust and allowing that view to be taught in his classroom. I understand the school board is meeting tomorrow to consider this change in rehire him. As it was voted last fall, five to two to fire Lapson on grounds of ethical misconduct and failure to carry out job responsibilities, I agreed with that decision and feel strongly that it should be upheld. The fact that there were two dissenting votes is frankly disturbing. The Nazi genocide of Jews in World War II during the Holocaust is an atrocity that we must teach our children in the hopes that this will happen never again. These Holocaust deniers are not open-minded inquirers into historical truth as they claim, but instead guilty of spreading falsehoods which are vile and filled with hate to promote prejudice. As the Southern Poverty Law Center states, these people are spreading conspiracy theories about Jewish-controlled governments and media by attempting to undermine a history of horrific suffering. For Mr. Lawson, it claims to parents in teaching about the Holocaust, that there are various opinions, is simply incorrect. This is not an issue of opinion, but instead an issue of fact. Just the fact is that the earth rotates around the sun. According to your paper, Mr. Lawson included the following in his email reply to a concerned parent. Not everyone believes the Holocaust happened, he wrote, and you have your thoughts, but we are a public school and not all of our parents have the same belief. He went on to say as an educator, he had the role to be politically neutral, but support all groups in the school. And then he said, I can't say the Holocaust is a factual historical event because I am not in a position to do so as a school district employee, Lassen wrote. The reason not everyone believes in the Holocaust is the same as those that think the world is flat. It is because they need the education to get the correct facts, and that's exactly why we send our children to school. If Mr. Latin does not know the facts, and the Holocaust Museum is one place to start, the outrage that his rehire is being even considered as offensive and appalling. Being Hello. My name is Tara Ezer, and I am calling in regards to agenda item COS1 pertaining to the special meeting tomorrow, October 7th, regarding the potential reinstatement of Principal Latson into the Palm Beach School District. I would like to express my deep concern in this re potential reinstatement, and it was very dangerous to have an educator proclaim that the Holocaust did not happen. As the granddaughter of Holocaust survivors, I am a living a testament that the Holocaust did in fact happen. And it is only up to us as the future generation to be able to prevent the Holocaust from never happening again by ensuring that educators are properly guiding the future generations and children with facts and knowledge and also ensuring that the truth is told and that we leverage our educational system to strengthen and not weaken and I sincerely appreciate you taking the time to hear my comments and that you will take into consideration that if Principal Lassen is reinstated and he receives a back pay, then what we are doing is we are not honoring the words never again. We are actually allowing and potentially perpetuating another Holocaust to happen in the United States. Thank you very much for listening. I can be reached at 347-992-8504. Thank you and have a good day. I'm calling regarding item, agenda item COS1, William Latson, 
um, possible reinstatement as a principal. My name is Beth Rosenson. I'm a professor of political science at University of Florida. Um, I am disgusted by the fact that this person would be getting back pay and be invited to come back into a role as principal or teacher, somebody who says they can't say whether the Holocaust happened or not. I understand that it sounds like the lawyers or whoever handled this screwed up royally by trying to get him fired on a technicality because he didn't return phone calls. So I guess he lucked out in that regard, but I do not understand why he needs to be offered a job. Doesn't the school board have the right not to rehire somebody who shows such a disregard and obliviousness and cluelessness and ignorance about a major historical event like the Holocaust? His comments were rude. They were offensive. There's no excuse that he can make about them trying to be politically neutral and saying some parents don't believe the Holocaust happened. I understand there are a lot of Jewish residents in this school district. How can he possibly be seen as credible by those kind of parents and any parent who, any educated person who knows that the Holocaust killed millions of people, not just Jews, but many other people, Catholics, gypsies, all kinds of people. So this person should not be given any job in the school system. He should be gotten rid of. I don't know what it takes to do it. I'm not a lawyer, but he shouldn't be on the job anymore. And if you have any self-respect, you won't be giving this guy, hiring this guy. There's got to be some way to get rid of him. Like I said, I'm not a lawyer. I don't know the technicalities, but this person has proven that he's uneducated, that he doesn't know history, that he has no respect for parents, and then tries to make a bunch of excuses and now collect back pay and stick around in the school system. There's got to be somebody better that you can hire as a principal to lead or as a teacher to teach. Thank you. Yes, my name is Cheryl Davidoff and I'm calling with um, code C0S1 and I want to um, explain that I do not believe William Lassen, who was fired for ethical misconduct over his 2018 email exchange with a parent saying, not everyone believes the Holocaust happened. I do not believe that he should be reinstated to his position and certainly not where he would be dealing with uh, our children of the future. And I'm sorry that this had to come to this, but this is something that is very important to me as a person and very important to um, the entire community. Thank you for consideration and hearing my voice. Hello, this is Dr. Daniel Layish, L-A-Y-I-S-H. I live in Orlando. As a concerned Florida citizen, I'm calling about agenda item COS1 regarding the reinstatement of William Latson. Uh, Mr. Latson, unfortunately, was uh, not willing to educate students about the Holocaust and um, admit that the Holocaust is clearly uh, a fact. This is really not appropriate for the education of our students in Florida. The Holocaust uh, is extremely well established, very well documented, and uh, needs to be taught to our students uh, so that we can all make sure that such atrocities uh, and ethnic cleansing do not occur in the future. As such, it would be a very, very big mistake to reinstitute, reinstitute Mr. William Latson uh, to his position. He should not have access to Florida students. Thank you very much for your attention to this matter. Hello, my name is Jennifer Carson and I'm calling regarding the um, principal from Spanish River, William Latson. Um, I know tomorrow you'll be meeting and I would like this um, voicemail to be played. As someone who went through the Palm Beach County school system from kindergarten through high school and still resides locally, I'm so disappointed that the school district would even consider 
reintroducing a bigot to the system, right? Our students are our most prized possession, and education should really not be tampered with with someone who has such biased views and isn't scared to put them out there, especially in a county where there's so many Jewish residents. This is not only offensive, but it's something that hits close to home with many Holocaust survivors still living in town. So for someone to blatantly disrespect history, right, which is unequivocally true, and there's still survivors that are telling their stories out there and have PTSD from the horror that they experienced years ago, we need to be treating this topic with respect and not disrespecting what happened. The survivors and students need to be hearing an unbiased and unbigoted education on Holocaust studies. So for William Lassen to even be considered to be put back into a position of leadership is just beyond unacceptable, and I really hope that the board will really reconsider this. So thank you very much. Hi, my name is Susan Singer. I'm calling um, about this teacher Watson. Um, he's an anti-Semite. He's uh, and he should not be rehired. He's a Holocaust denier. His name is William Lotson. He needs to be, stay fired. He should, he's, you cannot have a Holocaust denying anti-Semite as a teacher in your school district. My name is Susan Singer, and it's C O S. One. That's the agenda number. Thank you. Hi, my name is Suzanne Rosen Snyder. I'm calling in reference to the consideration of rehiring the principal who is engaged in Holocaust denial. I find it absolutely outrageous in this climate of hate and anti-Semitism that you would even fathom rehiring such a person. Um, to just the fact that, that Holocaust denial is such a problem in this country, to have an educator of all people exacerbate that problem is just beyond reason. It goes beyond the, the scope of a school. It goes, it goes to speak to so much hatred that is filled with in this country right now. But more than anything, your job as a school is to educate students. And when the principal of the school engages in Holocaust denial, the damage that he's doing is irreversible. It is unconscionable that you would even consider rehiring him. I hope you seriously take this into consideration and do not hire somebody who, who spreads lies and who furthers hatred and anti-Semitism. Thank you. My name is Lynn Ellen. I'm calling from Los Angeles, California. I'm calling about the reinstatement of Mr. Ladson. I think it is absolutely horrible, disgusting, an insult to every Jewish, every educated person that you reinstate this man who is a Holocaust denier. It would be like us being denying slavery existed in this country. Has he never seen pictures of the bodies stacked up? Has he never read a history book on the Holocaust about what they did to pregnant women? Has he never gone to a concentration camp? Has he never read about a concentration camp? Has he never read about the trains that deported the Jews and how they were robbed and killed? How could anybody be an educator or call themselves an educator and have no education to the Holocaust? This man needs never to go back to a schoolroom. My name is Rebecca Schechter. I'm calling about Agenda COS1 or Agenda Cause 1. I understand that you're considering reinstating a teacher that is a Holocaust denier. I am a child of Holocaust survivors, my mother and my father. They lost their entire families under Hitler's reign. I don't understand how anti-Semitism is being tolerated. It is a tremendous drop in the face. Corrective action has already been taken, 
and now you want to undo ancient history and bring this teacher back who does not deserve it. On the contrary, further corrective action needs to be done. This man needs to be educated. He needs to be sent to Poland to see the concentration camps, to see what exactly happened, and not be teaching children that such a horrible thing, such a tragedy didn't happen. Today's day and age, we're having <coughs> slavery, wanting to have to, to, to be to be getting funding for the slavery reparations. Well, I want reparations because I'm a child of a Holocaust survivor, and it was not an easy it was not an easy childhood for me being raised by children by being raised I'm sorry by parents of survivors. I get very choked up talking about it. It was a very very hard situation for me. It's a struggle that continues for me, for me, my family, my siblings. Um, this is an abomination, frankly, for a man who's a denier to be teaching children. He shouldn't be anywhere near children. He shouldn't be anywhere near any school. I, <clears throat> if you need my phone number, it is 516-318-8886. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 My name is Myra Gold. I am the parent of a 10th grader at Dwyer High School. I'm calling about agenda item COS1. Um, Latson, um, whether he's going to get his job back, whether he's going to get um, back pay, I'm sorry, he should have been fired. This is South Florida. There are so many Jewish people in his high school especially. His comments show insensitivity to the Jewish people, um, disrespect to Holocaust survivors, and really hurt relationships between the Jewish community and the black community which historically has been a very positive thing. So I really think that he needs to be taught a lesson and um, anything that smacks of anti-Semitism in schools should absolutely not be tolerated. Thank you very much. My name is Morris Small. I'm calling regarding agenda item COS1. It is outrageous that the board is considering the reinstatement of William Latson, who is a Holocaust denier. I am a child of Holocaust survivors. My grandparents were murdered in the, during the Holocaust, as well as my aunt, my uncle. I was born in a D.C. camp. How dare Mr. Latson deny the Holocaust or question the Holocaust? It is outrageous that the board is considering its reinstatement and back, he deserves to be terminated immediately. Good, and good evening. My name is Susan Bell, and I'm referring this uh, for the agenda COS number one regarding the um, situation with Principal. Um, Larson, I am really very upset that it's, that that he's being even considered to get another position as principal in any school district, any place in the United States, especially in 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 Palm Beach County, um, where many many Jews reside, and many many Jews have history with with the Holocaust, myself included. And to have anybody deny the, the history and not teach it to our children as it's, as it's mandated by our governor, who has been so thoughtful and helpful in these situations, I find it absolutely unacceptable. And that he's asking to get back pay. Uh, did any of these people who marched into, into, into the death camps get back pay for anything that was done to them? It's unbelievable that this is even being brought up, and I really, really am very upset with, with the school board for allowing this to continue. This should have been ended last year. He should have just been asked to resign and permanent, permanently, and that would be the end. He's never, the, the gentleman has never publicly apologized for the, his statements and for his standing and how would that be, uh, he doesn't believe in the Holocaust occurred. I, 
I really think that you need to take, that the school board needs to take a stand on both for the rights of, of the Jewish people and for the rights of the black people. We all need to stand together against people who don't believe us, no matter what the situation. And if anybody wants to find me and call me, I will be glad to, to respond and show you the pictures of the family members who no longer exist because they died in an oven someplace in, in, in Poland. Thank you so much. Good day. My name is Mel Globerman. I'm calling for agenda item COS1. And my position is that the former principal, William Latin, should not be reinstated in any way, shape, or form. Specifically, he is denying factual information that impacted the deaths of six million people. There is no question he is either intentionally ignorant or has a major alternative agenda which is not consistent with American values. My position is he should not be rehired, period. Thank you for the opportunity to mention this position. Hi, good evening. This is Michelle Baha. I live in Boca Raton, and I just found out that you, that, he, that the principal of Spanish River High School, that used to be a principal there, is trying to get rehired. I think it's a disgrace, and I don't think it should be allowed under the consideration of what he said about the Holocaust, that it wasn't real, and I will not agree to him being rehired. Again, this is Michelle Baha. I'm in the Boca Raton area, I'm a lesbian here, and I, do, and I think it's a disgrace again to even think about having him as a principal again. Thank you and have a good evening. Bye. Uh, my name is Ray Schwartzberg and I am calling about in agenda item COS1. And my comment is about the principal William Latson. I strongly object to him being rehired in any form as part of the school system. His proven Holocaust denial is enough reason for him to not be involved in anything dealing with high school children. And I don't think he should be reinstated or given payment for back wages. Thank you very much for your attention. Good evening. Hello, my name is Nancy Layish. I actually live in Orlando. Um, I wanted to leave a comment pertaining to COS number one uh, regarding Mr. William Latson. I just wanted to say that the ultimate irony about this issue is education. So I figured let's do some educating. Let's ed educate Mr. Latson about the multiple Holocaust museums throughout the world where he can visit each room to learn about the unspeakable atrocities that can't help but pierce even the most hardened soul. Let's educate him about Auschwitz, the House of Horrors, the crematoriums where over one million agonized souls met their unimaginable horrific ends that are burnished indelibly into the sights of the survivors, their families, and others who will be haunted forever. Let's educate him about their testimonies and whose stories will change you forever if you hear them. Let's edu let him, Mr. Latson, and others like him be educated that 8 million souls, Jews, gypsies, the handicapped, and other groups are dying a second time because this man and others refuse to acknowledge their fates and deprive future generations to remember the darkest period of world history and therefore to always remember what happened. Reinstating this man to his former position would be a horrible mistake. Please do not do it. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Giselle Reicher, G-I-S-E-L-L-E-R-E-I-S-C-H-E-R. -E 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 I am commenting on today's special meeting about William Lassen reinstatement. I do not wish him to be rehired 
as he is a Holocaust denier, where there were more than six million who died, including my three grandparents and many numerous relatives that I never had a chance to meet. I am very upset about this, and I feel that somebody who is not aware of this should not be reinstated and should be terminated without pay. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, my name is Olga Rosenow. I would like to be uh, disappointed with the board if they want to reinstate somebody, a teacher, who or principal, that they should not deny all the Holocaust. It's a shame for a person to know for denial of this historical, horrible situation that the Jewish people live. You and the Hitler era. Shame of you, mister. This is Carly Gamble, director of the Stand With Us Center for Combating Anti-Semitism, speaking with regard to agenda item number 10. And I'm reaching out to articulate concerns with the potential rehiring of Spanish River High School principal William Lapton. His email to a concerned parent that sparked the controversy showed an astoundingly negligent attitude toward Holocaust education, as well as a callous disregard for the concerns of the Jewish community. It is our position that there is simply no place in any facet of academia for Holocaust denial, something that satisfies the international consensus definition of anti-Semitism. Should Mr. Flatton be rehired and thus resume his representation of the school district, we ask that he be required to undergo educational training regarding anti-Semitism and to meet with local Holocaust survivors to familiarize himself with the all too real horrors of their experiences. Stand With Us, its Center for Combating Anti-Semitism and the Stand With Us Side Off Legal Department will continue to monitor the situation to ensure that the Jewish voices within Palm Beach County are being heard and most importantly, that the best interests of the students are being properly served by the school board. Thank you. Yes, Marilyn Stafford. The number is COS1. And I'm calling to say that this Mr. Latson should no way be reinstated in any way, shape, or form in any position of any authority or responsibility. He is not qualified to be an educator. He is not qualified to be in any sense of the word given any recognition as somebody should be employed by the school district and um, he should not be given his back wages. It would be an affront to all the GIs that died liberating the death camps. This is the worst thing that this community can do is to recognize a racist, a black racist at that. This is regarding agenda number COS1. My name is Francis Kanzel. I cannot believe that you are actually considering reinstating a person who said an absolute evil lie and you would want him to be in charge of your children. He never should have commented at all it wasn't his place, and it's a fact that he's a complete liar, and it shocks me that you would even reconsider hiring him and giving him back pay. He should have been let go immediately. Thank you. Good morning, board. My name is Michael Warren Cohen. I am of Jewish heritage. I am calling about the discussion on cost, which is referring to the principal, William Latson. Uh, having someone like that supervising a school, which uh, has major effect on our younger children's um, 
learning or understanding of anti-Semitism is a poor move. Uh, we are taught today because of the Black Lives Matter situation that we should be sensitive of other people's feelings. If the board reinstates Mr. Lotson and gives him back pay, it will show our students, our community, that any statement against Jews and Holocaust survivors is acceptable, but it is not acceptable to say anything against a uh, black minority or uh, other minorities. So I believe it is the board's responsibility who represents the students of our community to not reinstate Mr. Lonston and not to give him back pay. Uh, I understand this could wind up being a, a financial burden to the board because you might have to fight this legally, but this is one issue that needs to be stood up for. Thank you for your time, and I hope you will not reinstate them. Thank you. My name is Sharon Littman. I'm calling about agenda number CO51. Please do not reinstate William Latson. To say that the Holocaust did not exist is ludicrous. When six million people died, please, please do not reinstate him. He doesn't deserve to be a principal. Thank you so much. Good morning. My comment is regarding C. OS1, my name is Susan Schneider. This is regarding the principal, Aaron Jeffrey, um, who apparently is trying to get around the Holocaust curriculum being put into the Florida schools, or at least the schools he's principal of, by saying not everyone believes the Holocaust happened. Well, it doesn't matter, sadly, whether everyone believes or not. The Holocaust happened. The curriculums have been written and shared all over the country. The parent is right. At this point in time, why would we still deny something that we still have living victims and considerable amount of physical documentation in addition to living victims? It's not his place to deny it, but to thank the parent and move on because to deny it is to put him in a position politically where he should not be and he should be neutral and thank the parents and suggest they um, send their question on, I guess, to the Board of Ed. But however, this man chose to suggest and state that perhaps the Holocaust didn't happen. There are enough people who think it didn't happen that there's no need to put it in the curriculum. This man does not deserve his job back, nor does he deserve any back pay. And if he wants to be in the field of education, he himself needs to be educated to understand and to know the real history that happened. I thank you for your time. I hope the right decision is made. Um, there are too many Holocaust deniers out there, and that's why we have super, the, the poor boys and all these other collections of supremacists, whether they be white or black or Native American or whoever, whatever nationality they are. There are Holocaust deniers, there are deniers of other historical events that have taken place that we no longer want supported in the way they have been in the past, and this needs to be stopped. Thank you again for your time. Yes, this is Rose Cantor. I am calling on the issue of COS1, Principal William Latson. I am the child of two Holocaust survivors, and I do not believe that anyone that cannot state emphatically that the Holocaust is a historical fact should be in a position of directly teaching students or being a principal of students. He should be given some sort of a, another job behind a desk, not dealing with students. 
One must be able to know what is fact and what is fiction, especially where the Holocaust is concerned. So much Holocaust education is given because we want, need to learn from the past mistakes of human history and not repeat them. One that can be equivocal about it cannot be one teaching her students. I do not like him to lose his job. I do not need, think he needs back payment, but I, I think he could be found a job in administration, a low level one in administration, certainly not one in charge of students. One needs better judgment than that. Thank you very much. I'm commenting on agenda COS1 regarding the former principal, William Lassman. He is a Holocaust denier. I cannot imagine any child being educated by someone who is a Holocaust denier. This is unacceptable in any school, anywhere in the world. Please, take in my consideration seriously. William Lassman should do other things but not be a school educator. My name is Jan Suzanne Krasner, and I live in Boylan Beach, Florida. Thank you for considering my comments. This is Dr. Robert Gutman, D-U-B-M-A-N, Lake Worth, Florida. This call is to ask that the that the uh, request for reinstatement of William Latson be summarily rejected. Teaching of accurate and true history is very important as a milestone for the progressive civilization. The reasons for his former dismissal have not changed. Therefore, the dismissal should remain in, in place and not be reinstated. My name is Bonnie Yuri. I'm calling about agenda number C O S one regarding William Lapson. I wish to state that he should be terminated permanently and given no back pay. It is outrageous and unacceptable that an educator could try to perpetuate the idea that the Holocaust did not take place or even question its validity. When we're living in a time of increased anti-Semitism and the rise of white supremacy, it would be a tragedy to allow this person to be in the educational system. Please put your efforts towards creating an education about the Holocaust so we can truly say never again. Hi, my name is Marlene Lipner. I'm calling on agenda number COS1. My parents and my husband's parents were in the Holocaust. Needless to say, uh, all our families were murdered. How could you reinstate this principle? And how would you dare to give him back pay? I don't care what he thinks or what he says, but he's verbally telling the students and the people how he feels, okay? This is not right. This is America. My, my family didn't die in vain. And also, my parents came here with nothing to build themselves up. This is horrific how you would even rehire him, even in another place. You should take away his license and let him get a different job. Thank you.
My name is Robin Weinsbratton. I'm calling regarding agenda number COS1. How anyone could be allowed into a classroom to teach young children or teenage children that the Holocaust was not a factual historic event is mind boggling to me. Not only did I lose family members during the Holocaust, I have visited Auschwitz and Birkenau. I am a history I was a history major in college. This is reality. This is fact. It happened seventy five years ago and things like this are happening throughout the world. We cannot expect future generations to stop this kind of behavior and to stop this kind of hatred if we don't teach them how it affected the world previously. I am embarrassed to call myself a new Floridian if this is the kind of educational system that we're going to have. My children are thinking of moving here and would be sending their children to school here. It's appalling to me that this is what they could be learning. Festering, the festering hatred that's going on in this country, the divisiveness, the racism, is only going to be propagated by this kind of educational system and this kind of curriculum. It's a disgrace. My name is Eva Krauss. I'm a child of survivors, Holocaust survivors, and I object to a teacher that will teach a den Holocaust denial. Good morning. My name is Sid Sinai, and this call is in regards to the reinstatement of the principal that has made the comments in regards to the denial of the Holocaust. I'm calling because I can't even imagine the, the contemplation of putting this gentleman around children and influencing decisions and thoughts in their head when a person like this goes around thinking that the Holocaust never occurred. I can't even digest that information, let alone contemplate the fact that he is an educator. So I almost feel like it's an oxymoron. Education, yet he denies the Holocaust. So I would imagine that the board would make a informative and knowledgeable decision of not allowing this gentleman and his ignorance to be around our children and their growing minds. Thank you. The agenda number is GOS1 regarding the former principal, William Latson. This is Adeline Soam from Boca Raton. I think it would be outrageous to reinstate a principal or anyone in the school system who is a Holocaust denier. The Holocaust is an established fact with video and plenty of uh, uh, people who actually were there to tell us that it definitely happened and it was a horrible thing and anybody who is denying it for whatever reason should not be in our school system in any position. Please do not reinstate William Latson into the Palm Beach County school system. Thank you. Hello, my name is Carissa Liebman. I am calling about COS1. I am very upset and disturbed about the principal's comments. Not only did my whole entire family on my mother's side and my father's side were survivors as well as death, they died in the Holocaust, um, but it shows me that this principal is ignorant and unintelligent and shouldn't be a leader for school, please. I, I do not want him anywhere near children because of his ignorance and unintelligent statement. Thank you. My name is Arlene Cohen Schwartz. I am calling in reference to agenda number COS1 regarding former principal William Lotson 
or Latson, who uh, is up for discussion of reinstatement to his position. I do not think that he should be reinstated. He does not reflect what we should be teaching our young people regarding the Holocaust. His position is offensive and not in keeping with the educational goals of our society. So please do not consider reinstating him at this time uh, I, or, or at any time, and I appreciate you listening. Thank you very much. I'm calling regarding agenda number C like in Charles, O like in Oscar, S like in Sam, one. The principal's name, William Latson, should not, I repeat, should not be reinstated and should not be given any more compensation whatsoever. My name is Ed Froman, and uh, have a good day. Thank you for your trouble. This is Jill Friedman. I'm leaving a message for the agenda COS1. I feel it's disgraceful to even consider rehiring William Lanson because of all of his comments about the Holocaust. I think it's just inappropriate, and I think he should be terminated immediately. Thank you. My name is Eva Schlanger, and this is about agenda number COS1. I am uh, the child of Holocaust survivors, and I am completely outraged that you would consider rehiring the principal um, that claimed that the Holocaust perhaps did not occur. To have a Holocaust denier um, in our school system is a total outrage, considering we spend so much time and energy explaining the history of the Holocaust and why it's so important to learn about it. Um, it, is, um, um, it is an outrage that someone who might deny the Holocaust would also be part of this system. Um, I thank you for the possibility for these comments. Well, my name is Marshall Brass, E-R-A-S-S, -S, and I would like to comment on agenda item COS1 regarding uh, former principal William Latson. Uh, I'd like to state my extreme um, displeasure that there may be some reinstatement of uh, Mr. Lassen to his position and even payment of back wages. Uh, the fact that he's a Holocaust denier and stated so uh, with public comments uh, is really no different than an educator claiming that there was no civil war or no World War II. Uh, it's important that people like this not be in our school system. And it's not a question of freedom of speech or freedom of expression. It's a question of a denial of history. And it is not beneficial to our youth, beneficial to the general population at all. And I find this possible reinstatement and potential payment of back wages to be a total offense to the citizenry of Palm Beach County. Uh, with that, I will conclude. Once again, my name is Marshall Brass, B-R-A-S-S. -S. Thank you. Okay. Hello, this is Michael Velensky calling regarding COS1. I am asking that the school board does not reinstate the principal who has denied the existence of the Holocaust. 
Somebody in such a high position should not be allowed to sway the thinking of young students. Thank you. So long. Hello, my name is Ann Rosenberg Katz. This is for agenda number C051 regarding William Lobson. Uh, I, my name is Ann Rosenberg Katz again. I am a child of Holocaust survivors. I am appalled that William Lobson is being considered for rehiring and for back pay. How could he deny the Holocaust? My two parents are Holocaust survivors. I grew up in a home without grandparents, without uncles, without cousins, without aunts. I never, ha I never knew from, I grew up, I was born in a DT camp in Germany. Life was not easy for us. My parents struggled when they came to America, and he can deny the Holocaust. There are hundreds and thousands of people that are either children of Holocaust survivors at this point. Many Holocaust survivors are now dead, but I certainly, uh, there are some that are still living, and I would be happy to introduce Mr. Lobson to many of them. He should only hear their stories. It is a horror that, was, that happened in our lifetime, and um, I deplore the idea of him being rehired when he couldn't accept that the Holocaust actually happened. How dare he? I have pictures of my parents in DP camps. I have pictures of them before the war, and um, certainly pictures of no one left except for my mother and father, the only survivors in the family after the war. Please do not rehire him. He is a, it is disgusting to know that there is someone out there that's denying something that happened not so long ago. Anyway, again, my name is Ann Rosenberg Katz. I live in Palm Beach County, and um, I, I do not want to see this man rehired. Thank you. My name is Papa on Brent. This is the welcome to COS number one at the agenda item. I uh, just want to say that if anybody who's thinking of reinstating this man, it would be a great mistake for education and for the children of our community. Uh, this man should not have anything at all to do with education. Six million people died, six million Jews died, about two million non Jews died, and uh, you know, this man has not a clue uh, as to what happened if he denied that the Holocaust did happen. Thank you. Hi, my name is Annalisa Donat. My grandfather and his parents were Holocaust survivors, and I'm calling about the comments uh, William Latson, I might be pronouncing that name wrong, made. Um, I find it absolutely disgusting from both a moral perspective and his inability to identify truth. And I think that's extremely dangerous quality to have in an educator. And I am deeply concerned for any student attending that school and he should not be reinstated. Hi, my name is Karen Desner, and I'm speaking as a Jew, as a person that wants to remember the six million that have perished in the Holocaust, and for all of the people that do not know to call up today, because I just found out about it just quite by accident. So I'm speaking about COS number one, that's the agenda. And I am boldly asking you to not give any wages back for William Lawson because he was a Holocaust denier. No one has been able to find out anything about William Lawson. I tried to research it and find out more about him. It was all purged from the internet. So there's a protection for Mr. Watson and the thought of children going to school 
where this is being denied, the Holocaust is being denied, it's bad enough that the educators in Palm Beach County are not doing all they can to teach the Holocaust. It's abominable what's happening that Maureen Carter is not making sure that every school in Palm Beach County knows about the Holocaust when escalating anti-Semitism is going higher and higher and kids only hear that it's coming from one side. They don't know that, and Jews certainly don't know, that it's coming from all sides. So I beg of you to not give this Holocaust denier any reinstatement because he should not be working for Palm Beach County that's reimbursing and rewarding him for what he has done. Thank you. I'm calling about agenda number COS1. My name is Arthur Yevin, Y-E-V-I-N, and I live at 14786 Amarino Way, Delray Beach. And I would like to say that uh, I think I, I find it horrible, the remarks, the denial uh, that were made by the principal um, Mr. Ratchet. Perhaps the Holocaust is the most recorded incident in history. So many tens of thousands of witnesses and such a horrible thing. And he denies it. You know, during the Nuremberg trials, where the major figures of Nazi Germany got up and were charged not one of them ever denied that the Holocaust took place. If there was ever a time to do it, it would have been then. But they didn't deny it. Only decades later did this came about where many of the eyewitnesses passed away. And Mr. Vaxen, I can't understand him, um, especially being a member of a minority, to say this horrible uh, thing that it never existed uh, when we know it has. So uh, I can't see him being reinstated. He had his chance. He casted his policy and let him live with it. Please don't go back and uh, accept him. There are too many other people who, are, who could fill that position responsibly. Thank you very much and have a pleasant day. Hello, my name is Gail Barshop. This concerns agenda number COS1. I'm calling to express my outrage over the proposed reinstatement of Principal Latson. Um, this is a disgrace. Imagine if this concerned a white KKK supporter, he would be out for good. Hate is hate. Yes, this is on agenda item COS1 regarding Latson. Hire only the outstanding and wonderful principals and educators that I have come to know as when my kids attended public school here, K through 12, and got into Johns Hopkins and Wharton, etc. So I'm a big proponent of public schools. Latson was supposed to be an educator, a principal, a role to be revered, not repudiated. He declined to educate the youth under his aegis and himself. How dare he not learn about diversity himself, meaning Jewish life, since teaching in Boca Raton, Florida, with a substantial proportion of Jewish students, as well as Holocaust survivors and offspring in his midst. It's both hard and sad to fathom that Latson made it to his 50s as a Palm Beach principal, receiving a six-figure salary for many years and didn't adequately enforce the state-mandated Holocaust education courses and didn't even learn about the Holocaust himself. Shame on him. Shame on this board if they reinstate Latson, 
who revealed his personal bigotry as a Holocaust denier. He never offered a heartfelt apology. Making a perfunctory visit to a Holocaust memorial or museum does not an apology make. It is obvious he is neither contrite nor improved. He could have reached out to the Jewish community and organizations for education to change his evil ways. Holocaust denial is evil. This Palm Beach County Board should do the right thing, forget political correctness, and even the fact that Latin is Afro-American. That shouldn't matter either. Discourage, dismiss, and disavow Latin. He didn't deserve a position here or anywhere. Our kids deserve the excellence we've come to expect in Palm Beach County. Not him. The eyes of six million dead souls are upon this board. Do the right thing. Don't hire someone. Don't rehire someone like him. I've neglected to say my name, Dr. Ann Kenner. Thank you. C-O-S-1, Lawrence Greenberg. Holocaust deniers should not be allowed to spew their lies and hatred. The Holocaust happened. Many, many people were killed. And anyone who denies that is avoiding history. Thank you. Hello, my name is Sunny Greenberg. I'm calling about agenda number COS1. I would like the uh, principal, the denier of the Holocaust, to please uh, show proof as to where my grandparents are. I never got to meet them, and um, they missed out on a lot of wonderful family events in my life and my brother's life, and um, I'd like to know where they're buried because uh, I've never heard anything, and if he says it didn't happen, then there must be some proof. So please do not reinstate him. It would be a horror. Thank you. I'm calling in regard to agenda number C as in Charlie O, S as in Sam 1, William Latson. My name is Yeti Steyerman. What are you guys thinking exactly? Do you want future generations to think that the Holocaust um, is not factual? Well, let me tell you something about factual. Both my parents went through the Holocaust. My father died when he was 97, went through three concentration camps, and hope you're listening, William Watson, um, ran away from the Nazis and zigzagged. He was shot at, lived in the forest, jumped over a fence, lived in the forest for two years, ate potatoes, um, and uh, was sort of part of a group, um, like Band of Brothers. Um, his, his parents were shot in front of his face. The Nazi general took away his home. Um, uh, and there's so much more to say. My mother was part of the Warsaw Uprising. Uh, she came here with one, with three siblings, um, so they were four people, but she was part of a family of 13 children, of which many were murdered and killed by the Nazis um, with their children. She was an aunt at a very young age, um, escaped through Kazakhstan, Siberia, went to Paris, and came over to America. Not the America it is today, I can tell you that. Um, however, the reason I'm calling is because William Ladson, there was a Holocaust. I lost hundreds of people from my family, parents, grandparents, not parents, my parents lived, that's why I'm here, because um, they fought, they fought for themselves, and they made it here to America. So therefore, I'm alive today because they were not killed by the Nazis, and everything Mengele did and all the, um, the, the tragedies that occurred how dare you, how dare you, William Ladson, say that there was no Holocaust. I'm a direct descendant of Holocaust survivors, and this will not jive with me. Now, either the board is made up of a bunch of anti-Semitic pieces of garbage, or, or they just have no clue, or something, because just the thought of hiring William Ladson, who's going to teach future generations that there was no Holocaust, to me, 
is a total disgrace. And um, I'm going to try to do whatever I can for you not to be rehired because nobody is ever going to say there was no Holocaust. Nobody. Let them say it in front of my face. Let them go ahead and say there was no Holocaust in front of my face. Hundreds and thousands of stories from my father. Schindler's List. Are you an idiot? Are you stupid? Do you not know history? Because you know what? It's... Okay. I'm just telling you, do not rehire William Last, and this is not who you want um, teaching future. Agenda number C zero S one. Deny, deny for William Latson for being a Holocaust denier. Replace. William Latson. I'm speaking to agenda item COS1. My name is Lynn Pesekis, P-E-S-E-C-K-I-S, -E and I live in Riviera Beach. I understand the court's ruling with respect to Principal Latson. He was essentially fired on a technicality. However, by the definition of anti-Semitism accepted by the state of Florida, his remarks of Holocaust denial are considered anti-Semitic. A racist or someone who makes disparaging mar remarks about gays would never be allowed to be a principal in Palm Beach County. How can someone who has made anti-Semitic remarks? Hateful words should not be allowed by any principal in our county. Thank you for listening. Goodbye. Uh, greetings to the Palm Beach School Board. My name is Monica Gordon. I'm sorry I don't have the item number, but I'm calling about the possible reinstatement of the principal who um, is a quasi-Holocaust denier. I am a Holocaust and human rights educator. I've been trained at Yad Vashem Museum in uh, Israel. I am a gallery educator at the Museum of Jewish Heritage, a living memorial to the Holocaust. I am closely aligned with the Holocaust Museum in Washington, D.C., and I know many Holocaust survivors. To have someone so callous um, as principal of a school where children and their future attitudes about human beings and what actually happened in history is imperative for the truth especially these days when truth is such a wiggly thing. So on behalf of the over six million murdered Jews during the Holocaust, which is highly um, um, verified, I have also been to Auschwitz and Treblinka and Theresienstadt. This is no um, hoax. This is no maybe it did, maybe it didn't. So I and begging you people to do the right thing for your students who are going to go forward in this world and hopefully they will have learned the lessons of the Holocaust, which is to not have us versus them, which is not to walk by when somebody is suffering and not do anything. That's what we call being an upstander as opposed to being a bystander. So I'm asking each and every one of you to be an upstander for what's right, which sometimes can be a little bit uncomfortable but do the right thing. Thank you, have a good evening, and please do the right thing. He should not be reinstated, definitely not. Agenda number COS1. I'm calling with respect to C O S one adoption of final order Palm Beach County School Board. This is William Lassen. My name is Linda Keller Schwartz, 
D-E-L-L-E-R hyphen S-C-H-W-A-R-T-Z. I am calling to express my dismay that according to news reports, Superintendent Fennoy has recommended and the school board is considering reinstating William Lapson. Principal Lapson told a parent that he couldn't say that the Holocaust was a factual historical event. Not only is a statement such as this painful to the large Jewish community in Palm Beach County, it also reflects a level of ignorance, if not bias, that should automatically disqualify anyone from teaching in our school system. If he had written his letter and made his remarks after 2019, he would also have been clearly in contravention of the Florida K-20 Education Code, which has now incorporated the IHRA definition of anti-Semitism. Holocaust denial is one of the key examples given in that definition. The school board is now bound by that definition, and to continue to employ someone who is quite prepared to countenance, if not promote Holocaust denial, is an appalling situation. I do not believe you should be reinstated. Thank you. Hello, my name is Abby Rosenblum. I am calling about agenda number C O S as in Sam one. I would like to express my um, a sorrow that you are contemplating reinstating Principal William Latson. I am aware that he didn't say that he did not say that the Holocaust did not exist, but that he can't say that it did. I would like him to speak with several survivors of the Holocaust and their children and their children's children so that he can comprehend how six million people, not just Jews, but that six million people, including priests and gypsies and homosexuals, were tortured, were, were relieved of their entire dignity, and were killed during the Holocaust. To reinstate a principal in a school is appalling after he has said that he's not really sure whether the Holocaust happened. Is he not sure that slaves were slaves in America? We are appalled as Americans that slaves were kept in America. Black lives matter, Jewish lives matter, all lives matter. He should not be reinstated. Thank you. Hello, uh, I would like to speak to agenda item number C. OS1 regarding the hiring of William Lafton. I am Josephine Gahn. My name is J O S E P H I N E, last name G O N, for Nelly. I represent the Jewish Federation of Palm Beach County. While the issue of how William Lafton's firing was handled has given rise to the situation we are in today, I would like to point out why he should not be rehired by the school district. I point out that Florida has adopted the International Holocaust Remem Remembrance Alliance definition of anti-Semitism into section 1000.05 of the K-20 Education Code, the Florida Educational Equity Act, specifically section seven. This definition stipulates among other things that, quote, inventing or exaggerating the Holocaust constitutes anti-Semitism. The school board is therefore bound by this legislation and bound to acknowledge that William Lathson is or acted in an anti-Semitic way. I would argue that a racist would not be allowed to be a principal in the school district, and by the same token, an anti-Semite should not either. I therefore urge you not to rehire William Lapson. Thank you for your time and your consideration. Yes, my name is Deborah Wagner, a judge of the COS1. It makes me very upset that I have to call to justify that the Holocaust existed. My father was in the Holocaust and 
it hurts me very, very much that I have to speak about it like this. And I just want to voice my opinion and let you know that I'm sorry that I have to do this. Uh, I love all. I love all Americans. But it did exist. And someone should realize it did exist and not try to jeopardize other ones' face. I'm sorry to, like I said, I'm very choked up by calling you. But it hurts to me to think that I have to do this today when we all went through so much and still going through so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good morning. My name is Howard Rosenblum, a full-time resident of Lake Worth, Florida. I am really appalled by the idea of reinstating William Latson. This is Agenda C O S one, I'm sorry, C O S one in regard to William Latson. Um, this is in the concept of reinstating a person who is an educator who uh, does not uh, completely believe that the Holocaust has actually happened, even though it was 75 years ago, uh, that there are not enough witnesses still alive or that have given their, their, affidavit, their affidavits that they were part of the camps that killed six million Jews, uh, gypsies, homosexuals, anyone that did not, that did not uh, fit the profile of the uh, German Reich, that uh, three people were taken from their homes, stripped of every dignity they possibly could have, and then were slaughtered. And for a person who is an educator, who is a principal, um, who uh, supposedly is uh, educated enough who have seen the events of what has happened in our world that has read history, hopefully could understand how disgusting it could be for another individual to feel that the Holocaust is really a question that is up in the air, that has not been decided, that is possibly a made up type of protocol made up from whether it be the Jews who have made up this story or other people who feel that they want to uh, persecute the German people, that uh, it potentially did not happen, that it's a story, uh, a fairy tale is obscene. And it's an embarrassment to the educational process that we have believed in all of our lives, that if we um, go to school, speak to our educators, that we get a truthful analysis of what has happened in history. For a principal of a school to leave the slightest amount of doubt that this event in our is unfathomable. Please reverse whatever decision has been made. Hello, my name is, uh, well, I'm calling about agenda item COS1, and uh, my name is Brett Sandala. I'm chair of the uh, Legislative uh, Outreach Task Force at the Jewish Community Relations Council of the Jewish Federation of Palm Beach County. Uh, regarding uh, William Watson's rehiring, I uh, would just like to state that the uh, IHRA definition of anti-Semitism specifically stipulates that remarks that he made on the record uh, go against that, that rule and that definition. And um, that's something that, that we certainly need to address. And something that's less often stated is that he made very similar remarks, or rather he applied the remarks he made regarding the Holocaust to slavery as well. So as, as ridiculous as it is to question the veracity of the Holocaust or to suggest that it's up to individuals whether to believe it happened or not, 
to say the same thing about slavery is equally outrageous. And we are concerned that a person in this position would hold those views. And uh, we certainly ask for that to be under consideration. Thank you very much. This is in regard to agenda number COS1. In regard to the reinstatement of William Latson, I regret to say that this person is not qualified to be um, reinstated, that his statements resenting the Holocaust are absolutely ludicrous. Please note that I regret to say that William Latson should not be reinstated. My name is Carol Silverstein. Uh, my name is Helen Daniel. I am a Holocaust survivor who does not restitution, is not getting any restitution from Germany or the claims conference because somebody planted a seed of doubt that I did not suffer enough. I was a hidden child during the Holocaust. Over a hundred members of my family were exterminated, including my husband's parents. My children grew up without one set of grandparents because of people like this principal who doesn't believe there was a Holocaust. If he needs more education, please consult the Holocaust survivors who are waiting to get restitution for the agony that they went through when they were hiding. And it would be disgraceful if he would be reinstated. He should not be reinstated, but he should get more education about the Holocaust, how they suffered, what their own money is. It's still with the Germans. They're not releasing it. Part of it is going to hold people that need the food. And he just will destroy people's lives and people like this principal, who should never, ever educate our children again. Because of him, people are still suffering. My name is Helen Daniel, and I hope he does not get re-educated again to help other children with his denial. It's disgraceful what he's doing. Bye-bye. Agenda COS1. My name is Marilyn Gelfand. My husband taught history and we feel it's a huge insult to even think that the Holocaust was not real. As my grandma had numbers written on her arm and was in Auschwitz, huge insult, kind of like saying coronavirus is a hoax. This is in reference to COS1. My name is Helene Hertz. I'm a Holocaust survivor, and I very strongly object to the fact that you plan to reinstate this disgraced former principal. The money that you wish to give him back, yes, by all means, give it to him under one condition, that he uses it for airfare to go visit Auschwitz that to visit Auschwitz and all the chambers that people were murdered and including over 100 members of my family. And under no conditions should this man be in a position to educate our children because he himself needs tremendous amount of education. Please let him attend meetings from the Holocaust survivors. Let him listen to their stories and perhaps that way he will stop doubting the fact that there ever was a Holocaust. Thank you so very much, and I hope you will never teach again. Bye-bye. Okay. 
Hello, my name is Diane Daniel. Agenda number COS1. Denying the Holocaust is like denying slavery. Both happened, both were disgusting. Please do not deny history and do not let this man back into a school setting. Thank you. Hello, my name is Daniel Mittelman, and this uh, is about agenda number COS1. Uh, I think that it's absolutely horrendous that you, the board, is thinking about reinstating the principal whose name is William Latson. He is, as I am told, a Holocaust denier. So that means that he believes the white supremacy platform in this country today. I don't think this person should be an educator in any form, much less a principal. So I, I urge you to please not reinstate this person. This person has no business educating children. Thank you. Hi, my name is Helen Halberstam. I am referring to agenda number COS1, the reinstatement of William Lassen. Um, Mr. Lassen not only in this high school, but should never be able to work with impressionable students again. This is how anti-Semitism is fueled. It would be very difficult for me to believe that a man of any intelligence can deny the Holocaust. Not that there needs to be proof when there are so thousands of people that can attest to its horrors. Not that you need more proof when there are thousands of people who were children of Holocaust survivors and they still suffer from the trauma their parents experienced, from hearing parents reacting to nightmares they continue having throughout their lives because of how they were treated in captivity, and not from never having a grandparent because they were annihilated during the Holocaust. All one needs to do is study the reactions of General Eisenhower when he liberated the camps and witnessed a broken, emaciated people. On the subject of paying him 152,000 some dollars of back pay, what, are he to be rewarded? Rewarded for this action as well? Not just the given the job back, which shouldn't be either, but a reward? Was this a paid vacation? In the current volatile environment in the United States, one must bend backwards, especially in an educational setting, to teach our youth that a person is responsible for his actions. Mr. William Lassen's actions were despicable time and time again. He needs to be held responsible. Thank you. Yes, this comment is pertaining to uh, the principal's name is William Latson, and it's in agenda number COS1. My comment is that this person who denies Holocaust is doing a tremendous disservice to all of his students, all the students within the school itself, because to deny what happened it means it's due to repeat itself in the future. You cannot erase what happened to millions of people, mainly uh, as far as the Jews themselves go, it was designed directly to do away with the Jewish population of the world. And to deny this is a travesty and I think he should be held accountable for that. My name is Samuel Millman, and I live in Delray Beach. This is for COS1 concerning William Latson. I do not 
believe that he should be allowed to come back teaching and um, making false accusations. Uh, my name is Dolores Rosen. Thank you. I'm speaking to COS1, Mr. Lobson, who is the principal in Boca, who is a Holocaust denier. My name is Shari Daniels, and I'm appalled that in a position where we influence youth, we as a free democratic society, having fought in World War II and lost so many men to free Europe from the Nazi regime, would have someone like him as a principal in one of our schools. I hope the board will reconsider this and not accept him back as a principal, will refuse to pay his back pay, and will make sure he does not have a job in the future with children who are easily malleable and who can be influenced by such a disturbed individual. I really look for your guidance in this and that you will hear our pleas that this man not be allowed to go back to being a principal. Thank you very much. This is agenda number C COS1 regarding William Ladson. I was one of the lucky ones. I was born in the USA, but my family, my grandparents on both sides, my uncles and aunts, my cousins were not so lucky. They were murdered. Teenagers and young adults today cannot even name one concentration camp or the number of Jews murdered by the Nazis. It is imperative to hire people who believe in evidence, not conspiracy theaters, and to teach the truth. William Ladson must not be reinstated nor receive back pay. He will not teach the facts. He does not deserve any place in the education of young, impressionable minds. My name is Marilyn Grant, and I live in Boynton Beach. Thank you. I hope you do read this. Hello, my name is Deborah Speer. I am calling about Ms. agenda item COS1 uh, concerning Mr. William Latson. I understand you may consider reinstating Mr. Latson as an educator. My understanding is that the judge ruled in August that uh, Mr. Latson should have been reprimanded or reassigned to another position, not reinstated. Reinstating him would be a disaster. Mr. Latson's denial of the factual existence of the Holocaust makes him unfit to have the responsibility of educating young people. Anti-Semitism is a growing problem in the United States, and uh, young people are especially vulnerable to its effects. Like any kind of bigotry, it's based on ignorance and the perpetration of that ignorance. Only a bigot or the most profoundly ignorant individual can question the existence of the Holocaust. Questioning its existence is a strategy of anti-Semites the world over. Mr. Lassen has never corrected or apologized for his statement. With his attitude, anti-Semitism would find sanctuary in the school, and Jewish children could be preyed upon without check. What Jewish family would be, feel safe or have their children feel safe under the authority of such a man? Thank you for hearing me. Bye-bye. Beverly Rochelle, R-O-S-H-E-L, agenda item COS1. I feel that um, the principal's contract should not be renewed and William Lassen should be fired. Good day, this is for issue COS1. I was raised in Boca Raton, Florida. I am now a 40-year-old successful businesswoman who wishes to have the teacher dismissed from Spanish River High School. 
Um, these are my tax dollars paying for his. I live in the district in which he is uh, a teacher. Um, that's basically it in a nutshell. So whatever needs to be done, I want to make sure this man is terminated. Um, again, these are my tax dollars paying for his salary, and he must be terminated. That's it. End of the story. We're a predominantly Jewish environment, population, probably the largest in, in the United States. And uh, as a Jew, I do not wish to pay for his salary. So I hope he is terminated. He does not, he is not worthy of teaching. He does, he's not even worthy of having, unfortunately, a degree. We're speaking of such disgust uh, of our Jewish people. And, and uh, I hope that he's terminated. And I'm sure that everyone else leaving this message feels the same way. Um, I wish I had something properly prepared, but unfortunately I was just told last minute, and this is what I have to say. Thank you for your time, and I truly hope that this teacher is immediately terminated from the school system, not only in the United States, but throughout the entire world. You do not belong teaching children. Board members, that concludes the agenda item speakers. Um, we have two items on the consent agenda, P2 and SP1. Does any board member want to pull the